The Sing and Play His Praises Orchestra and Choir of Missouri is now on its 12th year. How did it start? How does it function? How do they deal with daily problems? What is inside this group? How did they get to where they are now? We are going to take a look at those issues and begin by hearing from Kathy, their director. Well, I was way back in the fall of 1998 and I had a private student who belonged to a church that wanted to have a church orchestra. And they were all homeschool students. And the first couple of times I said, oh, I don't think I can do that. I just didn't think I was able. And with God's help and prayer, I decided this was something that I wanted to venture into. So in the fall of 1998, we started with 18 students, all from this one church. 18 students, and they all played string instruments or flute. As the orchestra grew, there arose a need for more help and for more parent involvement. Kristen was one of the first parent helpers to become deeply involved in training the students in their music classes. You're right. And lucky for me, Kristen joined us in 2000. Yeah. And she was one of those parents that said, what can I do to help? And I said, oh, I would like theory. And she had a background in music, and she was able to take that and run with it. Teaching music theory became an important part of their program. Parents like Kristen worked hard to improve their own skills and then created materials for the students to use. Kathy helped me learn the background on the strings, but that was all new material to me. Um, but I had a book and a teacher's book, and we wrote in the answers. We wrote in the answers, and I asked a lot of questions. A few years after the orchestra was established, Krista began building and training the choirs, and has been doing a great job. As the group continued to grow, thought was given to what would be the underlying principles, the underlying foundation, uniting all of the parents and teachers together. Our goal was Christ-centered teachers, um, that would be a positive Christian environment to nurture all of these students. Decisions had to be made concerning which students the orchestra would serve, and where would they come from. We want to be 100% homeschooled. Um, those students don't have an opportunity to play in other groups, and we wanted to have our ministry solely for that. Um, and the eight years old and up, um, and it's people drive from all over this area. Some drive, you know, 60, 100 miles or 100 miles to come. It is one of the so rewarding every Friday when we meet just seeing the students and hearing their musical sounds and seeing their faces. All the performances are great opportunities. We had fellowship and Christian fellowship with others. That's what we missed and that was the whole key. It wasn't yeah. performing. So that it's so much more than just music. Many of the homeschooled families in this area have five or more children, and private lessons is not economically feasible for many of them. And we want them to have that opportunity and to be able to, to play music in a Christian environment. Um, some of the times we barter out. There are families that help set up, and there's families that help clean up afterwards. There's families that help teach for the, the theory classes. Um, we have some that accompany in some of the classes that get money or get a credit towards their balance. This attitude of Kathy and the parents of the orchestra was always impressive to our family when we participated, as well as the welcomeness of the church that allows them to use the building. The church is very welcoming. Um, they've always felt like the church is a building that should be used seven days a week, just not one or two days a week. Um, and of course we start off with 18 students and now we have, we fill the church on Friday. If we were to have to pay to rent a place, 
place, that would raise the cost considerably, and many of the families would not be able to participate. So it's a, it's a blessing in all the way around. It's what was interesting, when we started orchestra, as Kathy said, it was two hours commitment on a Friday. And now we're at, there were some days that are 12 hours. It's not like, you know, if somebody's looking to start this, you don't have to just feel like you're going to be overwhelmed with 300 kids and, and not know where to go. You know, it started slowly and it, and it grew slowly at first. It has really blossomed in the last several years. But um, I would say, you know, on our part, I wanted to be involved with whatever my children were involved in. When I taught theory classes, my little ones went into theory class with me, which has made them actually know a lot of theory. <laughs> Years ago, when our family participated, spending time with other children and families was always something special. There might be a game of four square on the patio or a game of football in the parking lot. We could spend time talking with other parents, being encouraged, and sharing fun stories as we watched our kids grow. Oh, I think it's wonderful that it's there to serve as support, fellowship. Um, families, you know, we can lift up prayer concerns, we can, um, you know, stop right there in the middle of our rehearsal and pray if there's something that we feel led to, you know, pray to. Need for a family. It does provide fellowship for all of us, and like you said, the moms in the fellowship hall, Many of us, because we have multiple age levels, multiple children in different classes, are there all day. And so the kitchen on Fridays is full of crock pots and lunch baskets. And so we get to eat together. We get to just have a really nice time of fellowship, even, even the moms and the kids outside playing and the younger children. the mountain children, although I didn't come here for students in it. We now have band students, we have choir students, and we have orchestra students, plus all the theory. So we are pretty much, you know, can accommodate all the music where they might not be able to depend on their region. Daniel in the day. Symphonies of Hope, we felt it was a privilege to work on this hymn and documentary project together. It is our hope that through this video and others like it, viewers like you would consider encouraging other young people in a similar way, providing them an opportunity for Christ-centered learning and fellowship. Feel free to visit us at symphoniesofhope.org, and thanks for spending some time with us as we visited the Sing and Play His Praises Orchestra and Choir of Missouri.